So as Bernie Sanders continues to rise in the polls and perform well in early primary states, and it's projected to do very well overall throughout the course of the primary and possibly dominate on Super Tuesday, you see a lot of elites in mainstream media grapple with the prospect of Bernie Sanders becoming the Democratic Party's nominee. You see individuals like Jennifer Rubin of the Washington Post ask, so who's the moderate that's going to take on Bernie Sanders? Because everyone kind of placed their bets on Beto and then Kamala and then, you know, uh... Joe Biden and every single person has failed. It looks like Joe Biden is going to be the next Jeb Bush. So you see a lot of people in mainstream media just freak out in real time. And Chris Matthews is probably taking this the worst out of all the pundits because he um, he responded to Bernie Sanders rise with a reaction that I don't even know how to describe. So just watch. I, I have my own views of the word socialist, and I'll be glad to tell them, share them with you in private. And they go back to uh, the early 1950s. I have an attitude about them. I remember the Cold War. I have an attitude towards Castro. I believe if Castro and the, and the, and the Reds had won the Cold War, there would have been executions in Central Park, and I might have been one of the ones getting executed. And certain other people would be there cheering, okay? So I have a problem with people who took the other side. I don't know who Bernie Ch Bernie supports over these years. I don't know what he means by social. One week it's Denmark. We're going to be like Denmark. Okay, that's harmless. That's, a, that's basically a capitalist country with a lot of good social welfare programs. Denmark is harmless. It's pretty clearly in the Denmark is category. Yeah. Are you sure? How do you know? Did he tell you that? Well, I mean, that's what he says, and that's what his agenda calls for, right? Yeah, yeah, He's not uh, calling uh, for well, anything. Let's, let's see. Let's figure that one out. A, well, we haven't seen a, a campaign yet where video of him praising the other version right. of Castro and then, has been used, well, but that's it a, will be used. That's a question We've of, how, seen how, that plays of how tangible, what, what the effect that has. In well, what does he think of Castro? That's, that's a great that? question. What did you think of Fidel Ismo? We all thought he was great when he first, I thought he was cheering like mad for him okay. when he first went in. And then he became a communist and started shooting okay. every one of his enemies. Okay, hold, so, hold, hold, those, thoughts on the Cuban, hold those thoughts He's on Cuban revolution. I have to go back to the spin room and Democratic presidential candidate. Chris Hayes was like laughing at him. That is embarrassing. I mean, you are a mainstream news pundit. You are tasked with educating the populace and you were having a meltdown because of Bernie Sanders. Chris, nobody wants to execute you, man. Bernie just wants to give people health care. That's it. So you're revealing to everyone what an idiot you are. Who believes that Bernie Sanders wants to implement a Cuban-style revolution here in America. He talks about revolution, but what he's referring to is a political revolution. We have had multiple political revolutions throughout the course of American history. We had FDR. That was a political revolution with the New Deal. We had the Reagan Revolution. That's what it's literally called, the Reagan Revolution, where he kind of swung that pendulum back to the right, and we're now to the logical conclusion of that far-right politics with Donald Trump. Regardless, I mean, we've had political revolutions. He's not talking about regime change in America. I mean, he, he just wants people to have health care, to save the planet. And uh, what does uh, Chris Matthews interpret that as? I believe if Castro and the Reds had won the Cold War, there would have been executions in Central Park, and I might have been one of the ones to be executed, and other people would have been there cheering. Now, I've watched this clip multiple times, and it looked like he was going to tear up, like he is genuinely horrified at the prospect of Bernie Sanders becoming the president. And, you know, I'm kind of torn on this because on one hand, I want to make fun of him because he deserves to be made fun of for being so painfully stupid, but on another hand, you know, we have to educate these types of people because he does represent, I think, a portion of the electorate who has believe the propaganda. Bernie doesn't want to hurt anyone. The people in this movement don't want to hurt anyone. We want to help people. Help us help you. We want you to have education and health care to all of the people who dislike this video and, you know, call me a socialist dipshit or cuck or whatever the fuck they call me. I want you to have health care too. Even the dickheads get health care. Nobody's left behind in our ideal vision of America. And we might not be able to accomplish even like a fraction of our agenda. But regardless, we want to fight for that because we believe deeply in justice and equality. And not just in, you know, a platitude sense. We believe it to our core. Like it's embedded in our DNA. 
So the fact that you would interpret that as, oh, well, you know, he must want to kill us. Stop. You're being ridiculous right now. We want to help people. We had a social democrat elected before. His name was FDR, and he was one of the most popular presidents in American history. Now, I think that Bernie is more accurately a social democrat and not a, de not a democratic socialist, but regardless, it doesn't matter. Like, just look at the policies that he's proposing. At what point do you listen to Bernie and interpret what he's saying in a fearful way, as if he's some sort of existential threat to you personally, to where we're going to execute you? Like, when he talks about the billionaires and saying billionaires shouldn't exist, he's not saying, let's go execute the billionaires. He's saying, let's tax their wealth so we can pay for programs that would benefit the needy. He's not saying, you know, um... Let's, let's hurt anyone. Like, what are you talking about? This is an individual who is fundamentally opposed to hatred and violence of any kind. So for you to say this, it just shows that even someone who should theoretically be the most educated is just overtaken by emotions and is hysterical. Imagine if Bernie Sanders were to get elected president. Chris Matthews wouldn't be able to contain himself. I mean, educate yourself. You're on national television, Chris. Like, people watching this who aren't very savvy, who aren't educated, who are low-information voters are going to see you freak out, and then they may freak out and think, oh, wow, maybe I missed, you know, this part of Bernie Sanders' speech where uh, he wants to hurt me. I mean, what the fuck are you talking about? This is absolutely bananas. Like, MSNBC, if they want to maintain their credibility, they've got to remove people like Chris Matthews from their network, because this makes them look, look absolutely terrible. I mean, you can't have someone on your network who's so terrified of a candidate who just wants to give everyone health care and education that he thinks he's going to get killed. Oh, well, this is like, you know, the Fidel Castro revolution in Cuba. I mean, Jesus Christ, get it together. I don't know what else to say about this. Get it the fuck together, man. This is not normal behavior. You're a grown man, and you're supposed to be educating people. You're in the news. You're one of the most well-known pundits, and you're freaking out because you think that Bernie Sanders is akin to Fidel Castro, and that people are going to be gunned down in the streets. Why would we want that? We live in America. Do you think that we want to live in a fucking war zone like that? Do you think we'd want that in America? We just want to help people. We don't want people to die. We're against death and destruction. We're the ones against war. We're the ones who are fighting for health care for every single person. So for you to worry like that, like I find, I find your lack of intelligence insulting and embarrassing for you, but it's just, it's insulting. The people who are the most compassionate are perceived by idiots like Chris Matthews to be the, uh, the most ruthless and barbaric. No, that's you. So, I mean, this is just, it's what we've come to expect from individuals like Chris Matthews, but we shouldn't tolerate this. Like, this should be unac unacceptable. Like, MSNBC should not have people like Chris Matthews who are that uninformed that they believe that social democracy is tantamount to a violent revolution. I mean, <laughs> even your own colleagues laugh at you. At what point do you at least try to do better and educate yourself on the bare minimum of what you talk about every single night, Chris? I mean, I don't even know what to say to this. It's just, it's, it's absurd.